Hello everyone, this is Balamurli Krishna for M Sigma Gokulam. In this session, I want to explain an excellent chapter, Linear Algebra from Engineering Mathematics part. You know, this chapter is common for every branch, Electronics, Electrical Engineering, Instrumentation Engineering, Civil, Mechanical, Production, Computer Science, Data Science. Almost in every branch, it is there. So, what are the topics of this chapter? What are the importance of those topics? What are the previous questions given from them in this chapter? Very elaborately, in a detailed manner, I will explain one after another. Okay? Let us start heading linear algebra. Chapter name. It is actually matrix algebra. You know from 8th class, 9th class, 10th class onwards, you have studied matrices and different types of matrices, determinants, their properties may be forgotten. Firstly, I recap them first. Then we understand uh, in depth, you know, what are the concepts of the chapter. Okay. You know, this is a matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is a matrix. Here, let us take some A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I, J, K, L. This is also a matrix. Let me take one more. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. You observe, in this, these type of brackets we use. Curved brackets. Square brackets. You know, two pairs of vertical bars like this also. You observe, in this matrix, we have three rows, three columns. So, here, I say that the order of this matrix is 3 by 3. The number of rows 3, the number of columns also 3. That is called order of the matrix. Always row number first, column number next. Here, square brackets we use like this. Here, observe, three rows are there, four columns are there. Now, it is a 3 by 4 matrix. The order of this matrix is 3 by 4. Here, two pairs of vertical bars I am using. Only single row is there, four columns are there. It is a 1 by 4 matrix. Similarly, you observe, if I take x, y, z like this, then it is 3 row single column, 3 by 1 matrix. So, these are all, these are all different matrices we can understand. It is called square matrix because the number of rows and columns are same. This is a rectangular matrix. Three rows are there, four columns are there. So, number of rows and number of columns, not same. Then it is a rectangular matrix. Only single row is there. It is a row matrix. Single column is there. It is a column matrix. So, here I write clearly it is a square matrix. This is a rectangular matrix. It is a row matrix. This is a column matrix. But remember, any matrix can be represented by using three types of 
brackets. These are curved brackets, square brackets and two pairs of vertical, bar, vertical bars like this also we can use. Okay. Now, some other matrices, let us see. Suppose I have like this, 1, 2, 3, 0, 4, 5, 0, 0, 6. It is also a square matrix. But remember, this is called principal diagonal or leading diagonal. This is a diagonal that is called principal diagonal or leading diagonal. All the elements below the principal diagonal are zeros. Here only you can find upper triangular portion. In that portion only we find some elements. But it is very important all the elements below the principal diagonal are zero. Then it is called upper triangular matrix. Okay, quite opposite to this. Let us see now. Suppose A, B, C, 0, D, 0, 0, F. Okay. Here, in the principal diagonal, you have some elements. Here, above the principal diagonal, we are having zeros. So, in this group only, we are having some elements. All the elements above the principal diagonal are zero. Clear? Here, lower triangular form of group of elements is that. This is called lower triangular matrix. Okay? Similarly, you observe one more. I have like this. 1, 0, 0. 0, 2, 0. 0, 0, 3. Here, above the principal diagonal, below the principal diagonal. Here and here, zeros. All the elements above the principal diagonal, Below the principal diagonal are zeros. This type of matrix is called diagonal matrix. Fine. Suppose if you see all diagonal elements are equal to one particular number. For example, like this. 4, 0, 0. 0, 4, 0. 0, 0, 4. It is a diagonal matrix, but all diagonal elements are equal to one particular constant 4. This is called scalar matrix. So, this type of matrix is called scalar matrix. Fine. You observe upper triangular, lower triangular, diagonal matrix, scalar matrix. These are, these are all square matrices. Number of rows, number of columns is same. Clear? They will not be rectangular matrices. Next, some other important matrices are there. Let us see them also. I have like this. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. It is a scalar matrix, but that scalar is 1, number 1. It is called unit matrix or identity matrix. This is called unit matrix or identity matrix. Okay. Suppose generally it is represented by the letter I. Here, three rows, three columns are there. It is a three by three unit matrix. Simply, I3 I write. I3 means like this three by three unit matrix. Suppose if it is four by four matrix, another row, another column will be there. Another diagonal element one will be there. Then, I4 I write. 
if it is n by n matrix n rows and columns will be there all the diagonal elements are equal to 1 like that how many elements will be there n elements will be there i n by n r i n like that we write ok now 0 matrix is there all elements are zeros it is called zero matrix or null matrix null matrix that is represented by the letter o o for zero matrix all elements are zeros remember here Here there is no restriction 3 rows 3 columns like that. It may be a rectangular matrix also but all elements are zeros then it is a zero matrix. So you observe what are the types of matrices we have learnt. So in the chapter linear algebra these are all very very important to remember. Square matrix, rectangular matrix, row matrix, column matrix, upper triangular lower triangular, diagonal matrix, scalar matrix, unit matrix or identity matrix, zero matrix or null matrix. Okay? Now, I want to explain related to these things, some properties related to determinants also. So, what is the difference between determinant and matrix? Okay? Let us see that. Suppose if you have like this A, B, C, D. This is a 2 by 2 matrix. Let me take A. Capital A 2 by 2 matrix. Generally, small letters are used for representing elements. Capital letters are used for representing matrix okay suppose if i take like this same thing i write like this now it is not matrix it is called determinant now we write like this det a this is matrix a it is det a so generally what is the determinant value means we take one cross multiplication like this. It is actually A into D multiply minus B into C. That is called determinant value of this matrix. You observe this type of brackets matrix. Here one pair of vertical bar I am using. That is called determinant that is giving finally one value a d minus b c some value ok that value is called value of the determinant of this matrix for example determinant of 2 3 4 5 what i am saying just you take one cross multiplication like this 2 into 5 10 minus 4 into 3 12 10 minus 12 minus 2. That is the value of the determinant of that matrix. Suppose that value not equal to 0. Determinant of minus 2 means it is not 0. Then it is called non-singular matrix. Determinant of some matrix is 0 coming that is called singular. So here two more things we are learning. Det A not equal to 0, Det A equal to 0. Det A not equal to 0 means it is a non-singular matrix. Det A equal to 0 means singular matrix. Fine. So, every word is important, singular, non-singular, upper triangular, lower triangular, diagonal, scalar. 
So, we should not have any confusion in our questions while doing solutions in examination. Okay. Now, I want to explain another important thing. Any matrix can be represented like this also. Capital A, if I write like this, A11, A12, the general way of writing any matrix, A13 and so on, A1n. Similarly, A21, A22, A23 and so on, A2n. Like this, AM1, AM2, AM3 and so on, AMN. Here you observe, in every row n elements are there. In every column, m elements are there. Row wise means horizontally, vertically column wise. You observe, 1, 1, first row, first column. 1, 2, first row, second column. 1, 3, first row, third column. 1, n, first row, nth column. Here, 2, 1, second row. 3, 1. M1, M rows are there. So, what is the order of this matrix means? M by N. M rows are there and columns are there. This can also be represented like this. Aij, M by N. This is the way of representing the same matrix like this. Each element is in the form Aij. What does indicate I? J indicating what? I means row number. For example, you see this A23. This element location in second row and third column. So, I indicates row number, J indicates column number. M indicates number of rows, N indicates number of columns. This is also an excellent way to understand the representation of a matrix. Okay. Next, why I am explaining this sense? The reason is very interesting. Let us see one example like this. Suppose I have one matrix like this. 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 5, 3, 5, 6. Okay. You observe. With respect to the principal diagonal, if you concentrate, this is actually a 1, 1 position, a 2, 2, a 3, 3. So, i, j same in the diagonal part only. Here a 1, 2, here a 2, 1, a 1, 3, 3, a 3, 1, 3, a 2, 3, 5, a 3, 2, 5. This is called symmetric matrix. Aij equal to Aji for all i comma j. Ij position, Ji position, same. I indicates row number, J indicates column number. This symbol for all. That means what you know, this matrix, this row, you write column wise. 1, 2, 3. This row I am taking column wise. This row I am taking column wise. 2, 4, 5. Third row I am making as third column. 3, 5, 6. You observe both are same. But these rows are coming here as columns. You observe. Rows are becoming columns. Then this is called transpose, transpose of capital A. That is denoted by AT. A transpose means rows into columns you write, simply. So, whenever you see that, what you observe means this only, Aij equal to Aj. So, A transpose equal to A. Then it is called symmetric matrix. 
if a transpose equal to a then it is called symmetric every word is important so in the symmetric matrix means same matrix will come because of a is equal to a j a transpose equal to a transposing means rows we are writing as columns automatically columns becomes rows no need to check now observe i want to do like this suppose i have some matrix b 0 4 minus 5 minus 4 0 6 5 minus 6 0 you observe carefully for this i am taking transpose what is b transpose this row take it as column this row take it as second column this row also take it as another column you observe here 0 4 minus 5 here 0 minus 4 5 plus 4 here minus 4 here minus 5 here plus 5 here opposite signs are coming here minus 4 plus 4 zero same 6 here minus 6 here 5 here minus 5 minus 6 plus 6 0 0 it is not the same matrix like in the previous example this matrix this matrix same but here i am not having like that so how does it come if i multiply each and every row with minus 1 Zero into minus one, zero only. Four into minus one, minus four. Five into minus one. Here minus five into minus one plus five. Minus four into minus one plus four. Zero into minus one. Six into minus six. Six into minus one, minus six. Here five into minus one, minus six into minus one plus six. Zero into minus one. so you get this matrix by multiplying each and every every element with minus 1 that means my b transpose is minus 1 into b you are multiplying a matrix with a constant means each and every element you have to multiply then it is minus b minus 1 into b means minus b so in the previous case a transpose equal to a here b transpose is minus b moreover with respect to the principal diagonal if you observe here plus 4 here minus 4 opposite signs minus 5 plus 5 6 here minus 6 here it is a12 here a21 a12 a21 relation extra minus sign is there a13 here a31 so if you multiple multiply with minus 1 you will get this a23 here A three two extra minus sign. So what do you observe? A i j equal to A j i then symmetric. It's not A j i minus A j i. Then it is called skew symmetric matrix for all i comma j. Then it is skew symmetric or asymmetric or anti symmetric. all are same skew symmetric matrix or asymmetric matrix or anti symmetric matrix here interesting fact one thing is there all diagonal elements you observe here zeros here zeros all diagonal elements of a skew symmetric matrix must be zero if it is a symmetric matrix there is no restriction if it is a skew symmetric matrix definitely all the diagonal elements should be zero so that is an important fact all diagonal elements diagonal elements means principal diagonal elements of a skew symmetric matrix or zeros it is compulsory please don't forget 
all diagonal elements of a skew symmetric matrix are zeros. So, these are all basic types of matrices. Sir, why we have to learn all these things? For understanding further concepts. We have understood now what is a matrix, what is a determinant. Determinant gives only single value, but matrix is not like that. Clear? Let us continue with the properties of determinants. Okay. These are very, very useful till the end of the chapter. Almost in every problem, in every concept, these properties will help a lot. Let us see one by one. With simple examples, I explain. Then what is the sense or essence? I write that sense. Okay. I have one determinant like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let it be debt A. So, its value is actually 1 into 4 minus 2 into 3. So, 4 minus 6. That means minus 2. Originally. Now, I interchange these two rows. Okay. So, row 1, row 2. Row 1 means R1. Row 2 means R2. C for column, R for row. Interchanging means we use double arrow symbol. This means R1 becomes R2, R2 becomes R1. Then it is going to be changed like this. 3, 4, 1, 2. So what is that value now? You observe 3 into 2, 6 minus 4. It is 2. Original determinant value minus 2. Now it is plus 2. That means sign is changed. Similarly, if you interchange these two columns, okay, let us see. I interchange these two columns. So I write like this C1, first column, C2, second column, interchanging with a double arrow. Okay. What happens? This one, th this one, three, two, four. Two, four, I am writing first. One, three, I am taking next. Column wise interchange. Then what is this value? Two into three, six minus four into one, four. That is also two. Original determinant value what? Minus two. If you interchange any two rows or any two columns, what is the change in the determinant? Value will be changed by a sign. So, that is an important point. By interchanging any two rows, any two rows or columns, the value of the determinant will be changed by a sign by interchanging any two rows or columns the value of the determinant will be changed by a sign that means original determinant is minus it is becoming plus suppose if it is plus new determinant will be minus after inter after interchanging any two rows or any two columns. This is one important property. Next, you see another example b equal to 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Now I add second row to the first row. So symbolically, write like this r1 plus r2 that means second row we add into we are adding to first row so 2 plus 4 2 plus 4 6 3 plus 5 8 
no change in the second row. So, that this R1 is becoming like this, single arrow. R1 becomes R1 plus R2. That means, we are adding second row to the first row. So, originally, what is this determinant value? 2 into 5, 10 minus 12. 10 minus 12 means minus 2. Uh, now, observe this determinant. 6, 5, 30 minus 8 force 32. So, it is also minus 2. Is there any change in the determinant? No change. Similarly, subtract from, from R2 I subtract R1. Here somewhat big numbers, small numbers. Now, I am changing like this. R2 is becoming R2 minus R1. Then what happens? Here, first row no change. 4 minus 2, 2. 5 minus 3, 2. Now see, 2, 2 is 4 minus 6, minus 2. Same. So, by adding or subtracting any two rows, the determinant value will not be changed. It is same for even if you apply for columns. That also I show you. Same thing, I am applying for columns also. Okay. Add this second column to the first column. C1 C1 is becoming C1 plus C2. What happens? You see, 2 plus 3, 5. 4 plus 5, 9. 3, 5, no change. 5, 5 is 25 minus 9, 3 is 27 minus 2. 25 minus 27. Oh, 2 plus 3, 5, 4 plus 5, 9. Even by adding, I am not getting any change. It is same for subtraction also. That also you see, then I write one sentence. I subtract first column from second column. Let us see what happens. Now I am taking subtraction. From second column, I am subtracting first column. Okay. C2 is becoming C2 minus C1. Then, first column as it is, no change. 2, 4. 3 minus 2, 1. 5 minus 4, 1. You observe now. Then also determinant 2 minus 4, minus 2 coming. You observe. By adding or subtracting any two rows or any two columns, determinant value will not be changed. It is another excellent property. So, that I am writing one point. By adding or subtracting any two rows, or columns, the value of the determinant will not be changed. Okay? By interchanging any two rows or any two columns, the value will be changed by a sign. But, by adding or subtracting any two rows or any two columns, that determinant value will never change. I am taking one simple 2 by 2 determinant. But, remember, it is applicable for 3 by 3, 4 by 4, n by n, whatever the order. Easy to understand with the 2 by 2 case. But don't, rem don't think that it is applicable only for 2 by 2. Okay. Next. Now, you observe another example. Suppose, I have 2 minus 3, 4, 5. This is that A. So, what is the determinant 2, 5 is 10, 10 plus 12, 22. Something you calculate in the mind, 
2 into 5, 10, minus, minus 12, like that, don't write. 10 minus, minus or minus 12, 10 plus 12, 22, okay. Now, I multiply this row with, you know, first row with 3. So, R1 is becoming 3 R1. Then what happens? Let us see. So, 2 into 3, 6. 3 into minus 3, minus 9. 4, 5 as it is. No change. Then, what is the determinant? 6, 5 is 30 plus 36. That means 66. You observe, originally 22, now it is 66. Is there any relation between 22 and 66? Yes, it is. 22 into 3 is 66. Why it is coming into 3? We are multiplying with 3 or 1. So, if you multiply any row or any column by a constant, any row, single row or single column, then what is the change in the determinant means? That new determinant value is old determinant should be multiplied by that constant or scalar. Okay? That I want to write as one point. Multiplying any row or column, any row or column by a constant or scalar. Any constant is a scalar. Multiplying any row or column by a constant or scalar. Then, new determinant value is equal to that constant into original determinant. Understanding? Whatever I am explaining with an example that I am writing as a property. So, multiplying any row or column by a constant. Then, what is the change in the determinant value? New determinant value is that particular constant is multiplied with old determinant or original determinant. Okay. Let us continue how to expand a 3 by 3 determinant. Suppose A1, B1, C1. A2, B2, C2. A3, B3, C3. This is the 3 by 3 determinant. Whatever the elements are there. Okay. Some values, plus, minus, symbols may be there. Some zeros may be there. Whatever it is. How to expand generally the procedure is this. You take plus, minus, plus like this. On the top row. Generally, what you know, I am uh, recollecting for the sake of all. Sir, why it is plus, here minus, plus. Why it is not starting sign minus, here plus, minus like that, you have a doubt. That is all decided by like this. The sign of any element, for example, A, I, J is there. Its sign is decided by minus 1 whole power i plus j. That i is row number, j is column number. So, this element a1 is there in the first row, first column. i is 1, j is 1. Accordingly, minus 1 whole power 1 plus 1 will give plus 1. Plus 1 into a1 is a1. Why it is coming minus? This element b1 is there in the first row, second column. Minus 1 whole power 1 plus 2. Accordingly, minus 1 whole cube. Minus 1 whole cube means minus 1. Into B1 minus B1. Like that we get. So, generally, Aij is the element. Its sign is given by minus 1 whole power i plus j. i indicates row number, j indicates column number. Okay. Now, how to expand this? Actually, this a1 into this determinant we take. b2c3 minus b3c2. 
so write that only this is equal to now a1 into b2 c3 minus b3 c2 next minus b1 into what to do this column delete this determinant a2 c3 minus a3 c2 ok a2 c3 minus a3 c2 plus c1 into this determinant a2 b3 minus a3 b2 so plus c1 into a2 b3 minus a3 b2 this is what you have learnt in your school or college days, right? But in examination, it is very time taking. Slowly all these values, substituting, multiplying, adding, subtracting, some mistakes we may commit. For that reason, I want to help you, I want to tell you one simple way to expand this. What is that way? Let us see. Same determinant, I expand like this also. Determinant of A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, A3, B3, C3. Okay? While expanding this, you repeat these two columns like this. First two, two columns only. Repeat outside the determinant like this. A1, A2, A3. B1, B2, B3. As it is repeat. Then you take three cross multiplication like this. Then you observe, in the case of 2 by 2 determinant, you know this, A, B, C, D. We take only one cross multiplication, A, D down component, minus B, C up component, A, D minus B, C. Like that here, 3 down, 3 up. Down components you take with a positive sign after multiplication. A1, B2, C3. You observe here. A1, B2, C3 is there. B1, C2, A3. You observe carefully. Minus, minus, plus. B1, C2, A3 term is there. C1, A2, B3. Here. C1, A2, B3 term is there. Up components you take with negative sign, minus C1, B2, A3, this is minus C1, B2, A3, you observe this into this, plus into minus, minus C1, B2, A3, this term is there, minus A1, C2, B3, here you observe, plus into minus, minus A1, C2, B3, next, minus B1, A2, C3, here, minus b1 a2 c3 just by taking three cross multiplications like this fastly we can complete this is the general way this is the fastest way but remember it uh, it is applicable only for 3 by 3 it is my observation not generalization okay let us see one simple example so, what is the value of 2, 1, 5 minus 3, 4, 2, 1 minus 2, 3, for example. Generally, students expand like this only, plus, minus, plus, like this only. I am not denying. So, today we are learning. We are understanding easily, fastly how to expand. Repeat the first two, two columns as it is. 2 minus 3, 1. 1, 4, minus 2. 
then take cross multiplications as I said like this. You observe 2 into 4, 2 4 say 3 is 24, 1 into 2 into 1 plus 2, 5 into minus 3 into minus 2, better 5 into minus 2, minus 10 into minus 3 plus 30. So, these are all at bottom, add them 24 plus 2, 26 plus 30, 56. Coming to up components, you have to take with negative sign. So, minus of brackets open. 1 into 4 into 5, 20. Minus 20 have to take that minus I am keeping outside the brackets. Minus 2 into 2 into 2, minus 8. Actually, you have to take plus 8. Minus of minus plus. 3 into minus 3 into 1, minus 9. You have to take plus 9. That minus into minus will give plus. Simplify this. So, plus 20 minus 8, 12. 12 minus 9. 12 minus 9 means 3. Already friend minus, minus 3. Now, what is the answer? Add these two things. Minus 3 plus 56. Answer is 53. That's it. Suppose if you do like this, you will get the same answer. Now, which is better, which is fast? In my view, this is very better, very fast. Particularly to expand a 3 by 3 determinant, it is lot of time saving in examination. Repeat the first two columns like this. Bottom components as it is you consider after multiplication. Up components you consider with opposite sign, minus sign extra. Then simplify like this. Okay. Now see another example. So why are we studying all these things? Let us see. What is the determinant of this matrix? So, here 1, 1, minus 1, 2, 1, 0, 3, 1, 1, these are the elements. It was given in 2018. Fill in the blanks. No options also. How to solve? You observe 1, 1, minus 1, 2, 1, 0, 3, 1, 1. I tell you, in any row or any column, suppose some elements are zeros, utilize them. Fastly we can solve. In the previous example, no element is zero, all are non-zero elements. In this problem, we have one zero in this last column or second row. If you utilize that, fastly we can solve. You know, the traditional way of expanding is like this, plus minus plus. That is also not correct. Every time the same procedure, no need to follow. Suppose if you have some zeros, utilize that row or column to expand the determinant. Okay. Now, I am going to utilize this zero present in the third column or second row. How to expand? Sign is very important. Suppose if you utilize this row, then what is the sign of this number 2? Minus 1 whole power, row number 2, column number 1. Minus 1 whole cube, minus comes. Alternatively, plus minus like that. Then, how to expand? 2 into, okay, that column, that row delete. Remaining elements. That means this row, this column do not consider. Remaining elements 1 minus 1, 1, 1. Okay. 1 minus 1, 1, 1. Next, this 1 into plus 1 into. Remove that row column. This column, 
this row delete. Remaining 1 minus 1, 3, 1. Okay? That you have to consider. 1 minus 1, 3, 1. Next, 0 into neglect. That is the advantage if you have zeros as elements. So, firstly, this 1 plus 1, 2. Plus 1 into this 1 plus 3, 4. Simplify, 2 into 2, 4. Here, 4 into 1, 4. What is the answer? 4. Simple. Maybe for 1 mark. Not a big problem. So, this was given. As I said, linear algebra is common to all branches. Okay, in the beginning of this chapter I told. Including some other branches. It was there in 2018 gate papers. Okay, exactly what is the branch, what is the weightage, not required. Given, we can solve. Okay, next problem. What is the determinant of this matrix? In the starting of the chapter, I told this is an upper triangular matrix. Okay. You observe, here two zeros are there in the first column or in the last row. Utilize them. Then easy to expand. Don't expand always like this. That is not correct. Okay. Utilize zeros. As many zeros as possible, wherever available, utilize. Okay, now I take this column plus minus plus. Then what is the solution? 5 into that row column delete. Okay, this column, this row don't consider. Only this determinant. Fine. Two, two. 0, 16. Then take cross multiplication like this. 5 into 16 2s. 32 minus 0. So, 32 into 5. 5 2s 10. 5 3 is 15 plus 1. 160 is the answer. You know this 160 how it is coming? If you observe carefully, this 5, here 2, here 16. 2 into 16 only that 32 into 5. That means product of these three numbers only. If you observe carefully. This 32, how do you get 2 into 16? Into 5 we are multiplying. Accordingly it is coming. Are you getting my point? So, if it is upper triangular matrix, then simply determinant value 5 into 2 into 16 here. That means product of principal diagonal elements. That is what I mentioned one point. The determinant value of an upper triangular matrix. is the product of its principal diagonal elements. Or leading diagonal elements. Principal diagonal or leading diagonal. Okay. This point you can remember. This was given in 2016. It is also for one mark I feel fill in the blanks. Next problem. The determinant of this matrix is what? In the previous problem, it was upper triangular, all the elements below the principal diagonal are 0. Now it is lower triangular matrix, all the elements above the principal diagonal are zeros.
observe all the elements above the upper tri above the principal diagonal are zero here quite opposite then how to solve same idealize these two zeros are these two zeros plus minus plus so solution 3 into that row column delete means this row this column delete remaining determinant pi 0 minus 8 minus 4 you consider okay then what do you get 3 into 5 into minus 4 minus 20 plus 0 it is minus 60 again you observe how it is coming 3 into minus 20 3 into 5 into minus 4 so whether it is upper triangular or lower triangular procedure is simply product of principal diagonal elements only so here also same the determinant value of the, the the determinant value of a lower triangular matrix is the product of its principal diagonal elements same like in the previous problem whether it is upper triangular or lower triangular you observe here upper triangular product of its principal diagonal elements here it is lower triangular determinant is nothing but product of its principal diagonal elements it was given let us see the next problem now observe 3 0 0 0 4 0 0 0 1 by 12 then what is the determinant of its inverse matrix ok first of all what is inverse we do not know correct now but I want to tell you one excellent property for doing this problem ok let us have before taking this problem I want to explain some background of that. Okay. You see now, I have one matrix A and its determinant, that A, and another matrix B with its determinant. Let us consider this matrix A, that matrix B are of same order. Actually, determinant is defined for square matrices. If it is 2 by 2, it is 2 by 2. If it is 3 by 3, it is 3 by 3. If it is 4 by 4, 4 by 4. So, both A and B are square matrices of same order. If it is n by n, B is also n by n. If you multiply that A into that B, then what do you get means determinant of AB matrix. That AB means that A into that B. This is one interesting point. Now, you observe, in place of B, I put A, that A into that A, that A into that A means that A whole square. Now, replace here A into A, B is also A. So, inside that A into A, A square. You observe, that A into that A, that A whole square. In the place of B, if I write A, A into A, A square. Similarly, if you take determinant of A cube, it is that A whole cube. 
डिटर्मिनेंट ऑफ ए पावर एन डेट ए होल पावर एन डिटर्मिनेंट ऑफ ए इनवर्स मींस डेट ए होल पावर माइनस वन दट मींस वन बाय डेट ए बट the debt a should not be zero it is in the denominator na so determinant of a inverse means no need to find inverse matrix time taking simply 1 by debt a you take enough so in that problem you observe 3 4 3 0 0 0 4 0 0 0 1 1/12 then what is determinant of a inverse clear Now what is debt A here? Again, two zeros are available in every row, every column. So utilize. Then three into this determinant. Four zero zero one by twelve. That means what? Three into four by twelve. Minus zero. That means what? Three into one by three. That means one. You observe how it is coming. Three into four by twelve. Four into one by twelve into three. So it is what diagonal matrix. Here above the principal diagonal zero, below the principal diagonal zero. This is what diagonal elements. All the elements above the principal diagonal, below the principal diagonal, zeros. Then here also determinant value what? Three into four into one by twelve. Twelve by twelve, one. So here also we can understand the determinant value of A diagonal matrix is also the product of its principal diagonal elements. so it is also one interesting point so whether it is upper triangular or lower triangular or diagonal matrix simply what is the determinant means without much time taking product of its principal diagonal elements fine but the but my question is determinant of a inverse I have I have found debt A. Then what is determinant of A inverse? I told just now. Determinant of A inverse is what? One by debt A. So accordingly here, one by our debt A value one. One by one one. That is the answer. It was given in two thousand fifteen gate paper. So all these properties are very very. applicable so that we have to remember whether it is small property or big property so concept is clear example is clear then what is the sense or essence to be remembered mean these points for that purpose only this type of listening and understanding very important okay next problem You see here, if one three zero two six four minus one zero two value given already, then what is the determinant of this matrix? You observe carefully. Here one three zero, here two six zero, here two six four four twelve eight minus one zero two minus two zero four. Clear. 
So, is there any link between these two things? You observe. Here 130, here 260 means multiplied with 2. 2 into 1, 2 into 3, 2 into 0. Here 264, here 428. So, 2 here, 4 here, 2 into 2. 6 here, 12 here, 2 into 6. 4 here, 8 here, 2 into 4. Minus 1 into 2. 0 into 2, 2 into 2. That means each and every element is multiplied by 2. Okay. Or in another way, I, I take like this. 2, 6, 0, 4, 12, 8, minus 2, 0, 4. Now I am observing in this row, all are multiples of 2. All are multiples of 2. All are multiples of 2. Correct? Or in this column also you can check. Column wise, row wise. Okay. Uh, now, here 1, 2 I am taking common. From this row. Then 2, 1s, 2, 3s, 0s. Here 1, 2 take common. Right like this. 2 2s, 2 6, 2 4s. Here 2 common. 2 in minus 1, 0, 2. That means same matrix you observe. This matrix, that matrix same. This determinant is already minus 12. So 2 cube 8 into minus 12. That means minus 96. That is answer. Here big big numbers are there. How to expand? I am not telling like that. The, is there any relation between this determinant and that determinant? So, in this problem, what we are understanding, that also we can write as one point. While expanding any determinant, suppose big big numbers are there. Make them as small. How to make them as small? In any row or any column, something common if you observe, take outside the determinant. That will make very easy to complete. So, that is what I mention here. If anything common in any row or column, then we can write that thing outside the determinant. As a factor of it, that comes outside the determinant as a factor of it. This is very excellent property. So, that box items, please do not forget. If anything common in any row or column, then we can write that thing outside the determinant as a factor of it. In this context, I want to extend also. Suppose there is a situation like this. I have I have one determinant like this, that A is A, B, C, D, okay. Multiply each element with K, that means K into A. So, matrix if you are multiplying with a constant K means each and every element you have to multiply like this, K A, K B, K C, K D like this. Then take determinant. Determinant of Ka. Then, according to the property, what I am saying is, here Ka, Kb, K common. Then you write here Ab. Here Kc, Kd, K common. You write Cd. That's it. Now, K into K, K square. 
determinant of a b c d remaining that means k square in this debt a b c d is nothing but debt a only you observe from first row 1k coming out from second row 1k coming out accordingly k into k k square is coming suppose if it is a 3 by 3 matrix like a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 then k a1 k b1 k c1 1k common k a2 k b2 k c2 another k common from second row k a3 k b3 k c3 from third row another k k cube comes here k cube like that generalize so k is a constant a is an n by n matrix here 2 by 2 k square 3 by 3 k cube if it is n by n matrix then what is that k power n into debt a understanding determinant of k into a n by n matrix is k power n into debt a so these are all very very useful till the end of the chapter almost in every problem we can come across from all these you know applications see the next problem what is the determinant of this matrix you observe 4 by 4 matrix given 0 1 2 3 1 0 3 0 2 3 0 1 3 0 1 2 its order 4 by 4 it was given in 2014 for 2 marks fill in the blanks how to expand maybe first time in the life 4 by 4 determinant we are going to expand up to 3 by 3 determinant how to expand we know 2 by 2 very simple this is also easy but I told one thing if many zeros are given as elements then that is very easy to expand so in this matrix also you observe row wise column wise where are many zeros situated or located here one zero two zeros one zero one zero here also one zero two zeros one zero one zero maximum zeros you can see in the second row or second column if you utilize them to expand it is a simple problem for example i utilize these two zeros in the second column for expanding the determinant then what to do 0 1 2 3 1 0 3 0 2 3 0 1 3 0 1 2 sign is very important here row wise or column wise we can expand the determinant not always by first row so i want to show you column wise also we, we can expand so this column two zeros i want to utilize so what is the starting sign on this number one it is there in the first row second column minus one whole power row number plus column number minus one whole power one plus two you get minus then blindly alternative signs you can take like this then what is the way to expand you observe minus 1 into we should remove that particular column and row remaining all elements we have to write in a 3 by 3 determinant ok so here 1 3 0 2 0 1 3, 1, 2, like this. Next, 0 into another 3 by 3 determinant will come. No need to take. Because 0 into whatever the value, you get 0. Then you take minus 3 into. Now, remove this particular row and column. 
remaining all elements 0 2 3 1 3 0 3 1 2 we have to take in a 3 by 3 determinant okay let us consider them 0 2 3 1 3 0 3 1 2 next also 0 into will come don't consider 0 into any determinant value 0 only now remaining steps i show you in this page itself now i continue here you observe minus 1 into again you see this 0 or this 0 utilize ok plus minus plus be a bit of fast 1 into 0 minus 1 minus 1 into 1 minus 1 minus 3 into 2 2 is 4 minus 3 1 into minus 3 like this. Next also utilize this 0 or this 0 to expand. So already minus 3 is there. 0 into neglect minus 2 into 2 minus 0 2 into minus 2 minus 4 3 into 1 minus 9 minus 8 into 3 minus 24. So simplify. So minus 4 into minus 1 plus 4 minus 28 into 3 minus 3 72 28 into 3 wait a little so minus 28 into minus 3 so plus 28 into 3 84 so what is the final answer 88 this was given for 2 marks. Worthy question. So, if I, if I, if you feel that 4 by 4 determinant difficult problem like that, it will be difficult. Simple problem only. But we have to understand like this. Okay. Next problem. If A equal to 1 tan x minus tan x 1. Then determinant of A transpose into A inverse, 2015, get question. Here, debt A B form. So, we want to find debt A transpose into debt A inverse. It is in the form debt A B form. You know, you can separate like this, debt A transpose into debt A inverse. You know one thing? Determinant of A transpose, determinant of A 1 and same. For example, in the margin I am showing, suppose A equal to A, B, C, D. Then what is debt A? A, D minus B, C. Then what is A transpose? Transpose means you interchange rows into columns or columns into rows. So, this row we get column wise A, B like this. This row column wise C, D like this. Then also determinant is same or not. So, that A transpose is also A, D minus B, C. So, remember always that A transpose and that A one and same. It is not a new thing. Okay. Fine. Now, in place of that A transpose, simply I write that A. What is determinant of A inverse? It is 1 by that A. Then, that A. Here, a, B, C, D form. What is that A? 1 plus tan square, 1 plus tan square x. That is not 0. Then this will be cancelled. 
simply 1. Because the debt A is 1 plus tan square x is not 0. Like that, if you understand, it is a small problem. Okay? Almost in every problem, something we have to remember like this. This box items are very important. Okay? Next problem. Which of the following does not equal to this determinant? It was given in 2013 gate exam in one of the branches. You see the options also here. Here elements are 1, 1, 1, x, y, z, x square, y square, z square like that given. And now here, here you observe 1, 1, 1. Here x plus 1, y plus 1, z plus 1. So that means what we are adding? Column 1 to column 2, x plus 1, y plus 1, z plus 1. So this comes like that only. It is simply C2 plus C1. This part. Here x square plus 1, y square plus z square y square plus 1, z square plus 1 like that. That means what? We are adding first column to the third column. So, this is coming by C3 plus C1. So, by adding or subtracting, determinant value will not be changed. We know that property. So, which of the following does not equal to? It is equal. So, this option wrong. Okay. Now, here you see. 0, 0, 1, x minus y, y minus z like that. x minus y means you are subtracting second row from first row. y minus z means you are subtracting third row from second row. So, you are getting like this only. So, if you do r, r, r2 minus r3, you observe. Then you get 1 minus 1, 0, y minus z, y square minus z square, this row will come. Similarly, to get x minus y, x square minus y square, that means you have to do r1 minus r2. Then 1 minus 1, 0, x minus y, x square minus y square. So, there we are adding, here we are subtracting. By adding or subtracting any two rows, any two columns, determinant will not be changed. So, this determinant also equal to the given determinant. This is not the option. Here you observe, 1, 1, 1, here 2, 2, 1, x plus y, y plus z. So, x plus y means you have to add x plus y, x square plus y square, 1 plus 1, 2. That means this is coming by r1 plus r2. Similarly, y here, z here, y plus z, y square plus z square, easy to observe. It is coming by r2 plus r3. So, again, adding or subtraction will not change the determinant. That is also not correct. Now, how it is false? You observe, 1, 1, 1. It is actually, I am writing separately from option D. One, one, one. This x into x plus one, I write x square plus x. Y into y plus one, I write y square plus y. Z into z plus one, I write z square plus z. Here as usual, x plus one y plus 1, z plus 1. You observe, here in the middle x, y, z is there. Here x, y, z at the last. Okay. Here x, y, z plus x square. That means you are adding this column to this column. So, it is easy to observe. This comes by adding third column to the second column. No problem matching. But here 
x plus 1, y plus 1, z plus 1. How do you get them? By adding this, by adding this column to this column c1 plus c2 but you observe so in the place of third column we have here x y z that means what you know if you interchange these two then x plus 1 y plus 1 z plus 1 may come here correct these two columns if you interchange then there is no problem x plus 1, y plus 1, z plus 1 will come in the middle. But this comes after, after that only. c2 plus c3. That means you are interchanging. If you interchange any two rows or any two columns, determinant will, will be changed by a sign. It is not equal. Are you getting my point here? Suppose this part is here, this part is there, then value will be same because x plus 1, y plus 1, z plus 1 will come by c2 plus c1. Similarly, this, this will come from c3 plus c2, but this should be here, that should be there. That means you are interchanging, then the value will be changed by a sign. I do not know that x, y, z values, but I say with a guarantee that whatever the value here you get, you get with an opposite sign here. Understanding? This is not equal. That is the option. Option D correct. This is a wonderful problem. Simple properties or determinants only we are using. Nothing big. Okay. Next problem. A equal to A037 4 by 4 matrix given like this. Has Det A equal to 100, trace A equal to 14. What is trace? You know, sum of diagonal elements is called trace. So, that is also an important definition. Trace means sum of diagonal elements of the matrix. is called trace of the matrix. This also remember. Now, for this matrix, what given? Det A given, trace A given. So, det A means, you observe carefully, here 1, 0, no 0, 2 zeros, 3 zeros. Column is also check. 2 zeros, 3 zeros, 1 zero, no 0. Better, three zeros are available in the second column or last row. Then easy to expand. But what is the starting sign? It is there in the fourth row, first column. Minus one whole power, four plus one. We will get minus, plus, minus, plus. Then zero into zero into zero into neglect. Directly B into you take. What to take? This column, this row delete. Remaining all elements you take. A, 0, 3, 2, 5, 1, 0, 0, 2. Okay. Now utilize these two zeros. Expand. So, what is the sign? Minus 1 whole power, third row, first column. 3 plus 1, plus, minus, plus. Then already B is there. Here 2 is there. 2B into that row column delete. 5 into A minus 0. So 2 in 2B into 5A minus 0. That means what? 10AB. That value given what? 100. 10AB value is 100. Then what is AB? 100 by 10 means 10. So, this is one relation I am getting between A and B. Next, trace of A equal to 14. Trace means what? Sum of diagonal elements. Now, observe 
a plus 5 plus 2 plus b that is nothing but trace. So, trace of a is nothing but a plus 5 plus 2 plus b this value is given as 14. With this I am getting another relation 5 plus 2 is 7 taking to the right side. Then a plus b equal to 14 minus 7 that means 7. So, this is another relation between a and b. I know a plus b is 10 a b is 10 a plus b is 7. Now, my question is what is modulus of a minus b? So, if you know what is a what is b then we can decide easily. So, how to get it a plus b 7 a b 10 then we know one thing a minus b whole square equal to a plus b whole square minus 4ab. Accordingly, a plus b whole square, I replace 7 square, 4ab, 4 into 10. So, this is what now, 49 minus 40, that means 9. It is a, a minus b whole square value. Then, a minus b equal to square root of 9. That means what? Plus or minus 3. Therefore, modulus of a minus b means modulus of plus or minus 3, it is 3. Whether modulus of plus 3 or minus 3, answer 3. It was given in 2014 for 2 marks, very worthy question. So, whatever we have some knowledge in mathematics, even school level maths, or plus 2 level maths, we should apply. Actually, engineering mathematics is very, very easy. Everybody can enjoy. While solving previous papers, you will, you will understand your caliber. Okay? See the next, next problem. Consider capital A 2 by 2 is a non-singular matrix and trace of A is 4, trace of A square is 5. Then what is debt A? In 2018, it was given for 2 marks. Non-singular matrix means determinant A should not be 0. So, solution part. I do not know the matrix A. I assume it as some A, B, C, D. Okay. Then what is debt A? A, D minus B, C. It was given non-singular means it is not 0. Some value we get. Now, trace of A given. That means what? Sum of diagonal elements. That means A plus D equal to 4. Trace of A square given. Trace of A square. First, what is A square? a square means a into a. That means a, b, c, d into a, b, c, d. Multiply. You know this row, this column multiply. This procedure is familiar to you. a into a, a square, b into c, b, c. a into b, a, b b into d, b d, c into a, a c or c a, d into c, d c or c d, c into b, b c, d into d, d square. Trace of a square is given 5. I continue the solution here. That means what? This is, these are the diagonal elements. Add them. A square plus BC plus BC plus D square. 
is trace of a square that was given phi. That means what? a square bc plus bc 2bc plus d square equal to phi. Now you observe here a plus d value 4, here a square plus 2bc plus d square is 5. I take this is equation 1, this is equation 2. Here a plus d there a square plus d square. So let me square of equation 1 on both sides. a plus d whole square equal to 4 square. So from 1. That means a square plus d square plus 2ad value 16. Now a square plus d square can be replaced by 5 minus 2bc. So this part I am going to replace by using 2. It is 5 minus 2bc plus 2ad equal to 16 utilizing equation 2 here. Now here 2 into ad minus bc 16 minus 5 11. Actually ad minus bc our determinant value. So, implies AD minus BC value 11 by 2. 11 by 2 means 5.5. So, our answer 5.5. See, 2 by 2 matrix, non-singular, we know. But how much depth is there in the question you observe? So, this all comes with a great practice. So, that is why I request all of you, once you understand the logical way of solving all these problems like this, then try some other problems on your own. Then you will, you will remember all those uh, things while uh, giving an excellent performance in the next uh, gate exam. Okay? Next problem. Now, I continue with the next question. A equal to 1, 0, minus 1, 2, 1, minus 1, 2, 3, 2. Then the top row of A inverse. Here, what is inverse concept? It is very important to remember one excellent result here. We know A into its adjoint matrix. If you multiply, it is always det A into I. So, what is that adjoint means transpose of cofactors. So, how to find that cofactor? I will explain in this problem. Okay. Now, if this det A is not 0, then you can bring to the left side. A into adjoint A by det A equal to I. Now, a into something is giving unit matrix or identity matrix i. This is called inverse. So, that inverse matrix is nothing but adjoint A by det A. What is that adjoint means? Transpose of cofactors. transpose of cofactors of capital A. So, this is all very important to remember. Okay? Now, in this problem, I want to find only the top row of A inverse. First, it is important to find det A value into adjoint A. 
So what is delta A? So here utilize this zero plus minus plus like this. Then delta A value one into two plus three five into one. 0 into neglect, minus 1 into 2, 3, 6 minus 2, 4 into minus 1, minus 4. So, 5 minus 4, it is 1. That means, not 0. Something by debt A, the debt A should not be 0. So, 1 by 1, 1 only. So, only the adjoint matrix we have to find. According to my question, only the top row of A inverse. Here, three rows are there, three by three matrix. Here also, three rows will be there. I don't want to find the second row elements, third row elements. I want to find only these elements. Okay, the top row of A inverse. So, how to get this? The transpose of cofactors of A. That means, to get this row elements, you take here this column elements under cofactors. To get first row here, here first column cofactors. Second row here, second column cofactors. Third row here, third column cofactors. Here first column means here first row. Please remember. Second row here means second column. Third row here means third column cofactors. My question is top row of A inverse. Only this row. Then here first column cofactors I want. How to get them? That means what is the cofactor of this element? Each element cofactor I find. What is the cofactor of this element? What is the cofactor of this element? Let us see. This element cofactor, how do we get? Minus 1 whole power, it's row number 1, column number 1. So, minus 1 whole power 1 plus 1. That row column delete, remaining determinant, this part, you have to take. So, determinant of 1, minus 1, 3, 2. With the proper sign, you have to multiply, that is important. Then this determinant 2 plus 3, 5 into minus 1 whole square plus 1, you get 5. That is the cofactor. Similarly, what is the cofactor of this element? Minus 1 whole power, it's row number 2, column number 1. That row column delete. Remaining 0, minus 1, 3, 2. Now, 0 plus 3 comes. Here minus 1. Plus 3 into minus 1, minus 3. Similarly, what is the cofactor of this element? Minus 1 whole power, row number 3, column number 2. Remove that row column. Remaining determinant, 0 minus 1, 1 minus 1. So, minus 1 plus 0, minus 1, into minus 1, you get minus 1. So, cofactors will come like that only. Transpose of cofactors means first row cofactors we get first column. According to my question, here first row means here first column cofactors. Already debt A value 1 we have found. So, 1 by 1 into 5 minus 3 minus 1. Remaining I don't bother. Simply it is 1. 5 minus 3 minus 1 is the answer. So, 5 minus 3 minus 1. These are the top row elements of A inverse. Clear? Next problem. 
कैपिटल पी फोर बाई टू कैपिटल क्यू टू बाई फोर कैपिटल आर फोर बाई वन आर मल्टीप्लाइड टू कंप्यूट द मैट्रिक्स पी क्यू आर दट मीन प्रोडक्ट मैट्रिक्स द मिनिम नंबर ऑफ मल्टीप्लीकेशन रिक्वाइड टू गेट द मैट्रिक्स पी क्यू आर दिस इज ए वंडरफुल प्रॉब्लम वी नो टू मैट्रिस हाउ टू मल्टीप्लाई ही आर थ्री मैट्रिस गिवन फोर मैट्रिस हाउ टू मल्टीप्लाई सो दिस आर ऑल एक्सलेंट यू नो डेवलपमेंट इन द चाप्टर so these three matrices you are going to multiply to get the matrix pqr so p4 by 2 q2 by 4 r4 by 1 how do you multiply at a time you cannot multiply all the three only two two matrices we can multiply so that is also important 4 by 2 2 by 4 here number of columns here number of rows same then we can multiply that is called compatibility then 4 by 2 into 2 by 4 result is 4 by 4 matrix now it is 4 by 4 here 4 by 1 here four columns here four rows then we can multiply Now, if we multiply four by four into four by one, we get four by one matrix. This is what PQR matrix. Now we'll get a doubt, sir. Why are you multiplying like this? P into Q first. Why don't we multiply Q into R first? That is also correct. Two by four into four by one. These two also you can multiply first. Suppose if you do like that, what happens? You see, Q two by four, R four by one. If you multiply two by four into four by one, it is a two by one matrix. Now I multiply front side P is there, four by two. Four by two into two by one meaningful. Here two, there two. Then result also four by one. so these are the two different ways to get the matrix pqr here first we are multiplying p into q after that with r we are multiplying here first we are multiplying q into r after that we are multiplying with p this is all okay but you know one thing two matrices Capital A M by N and capital B N by P. These two are multiplied. That means you get A B matrix of order M by P. M by N into N by P. Then how many times into required? How many times plus required while multiplying them? Into required for M by N into N by P, you get M P into N times into. Additions required M by M by N into N by P. If you multiply M P into N minus one times multiplication required. The ten also very important. If you multiply A M by N B N by P to get the matrix A B M by P matrix. Then how many times into operations? My question is what the minimum number of multiplications required? So M P into N times multiplications required. M P into N minus one times additions required. So coming to our problem here, like M by N, N by P. Our M is four, N is two, P is four. If you multiply these two first. How many times into M P into N? Four into four into two. This many times into required. Plus four by four into four by one. Now this P Q matrix is a four by four. Now it is like M by N N by P. M by N N by P. M into P into N. 
means 4 into 1 into 4. Is this step clear? Now simplify. 4, 4, 16 to 32. 4 into 1 into 4, 16. So in this process, if you multiply, it is 48 times we are using into operation. But here you observe. First Q into R, M by N into N by P, 2 into 1 into 4, these two matrices, 2 into 1 into 4 times. Next, 4 by 2 into 2 by 1, M is 4, N is 2, P is 1, like that, 4 into 1 into 2, 4 by 2 into 2 by 1, then simplify. It is what? 2 into 4, 8. Here also 8. Total 16 times only. Where is the least number? In this process, 48 times required. In this process, 16 times only required. <coughs> so, the minimum number of times multiplications required is 16 but not 48. Answer 16. So, these are all very, very excellent questions. So, in this problem, what I have explained is, what to remember is this. Two matrices A and B are multiplied. Then, how many times into required, how many times plus required? Like this. That result is important. Every problem is having some background like this. Okay. So, this is about all basic concepts in the chapter linear algebra. I started actually first different types of matrices. Rectangular matrix, square matrix, row matrix, column matrix, unit matrix or identity matrix, zero matrix or null matrix. Upper triangular form, lower triangular form, diagonal matrix, scalar matrix. They are all different types of matrices. Symmetric, skew symmetric, singular, non-singular. Like that I have explained. After that properties of determinants. Very clearly I have explained. Box items given. That is very important to remember. After that we have worked out so many problems which were given in the previous papers of various branches in gate examination. Without any repetition, I have explained all varieties. This is one, you know, major part of the chapter. If you are strong with all these things, then coming concepts and problems also very easy. Okay? <coughs>